Welcome back to our pre-lunch plenary session. Our next session addresses the theme of women in a men's world. How to influence an organization when you are the sole representative in a minority. Promoting gender equality and increased female leadership is a particular challenge in industries and fields where men tend to significantly outnumber women. In this session, High-level female panelists from politics, <coughs> financial policy, and aerospace will share their personal experiences and explain how they made an impact in their organizations despite being a minority, as well as outline the actions that their organizations are taking to ensure that other women can follow in their footsteps. I would now like to introduce the moderator for this session, Alison Birch, an ACCJ Tokyo Governor and Managing Director at JP Morgan Securities Japan. Thank you, Alison. Fantastic. Thank you, Elizabeth. So um, it is my great uh, honor, privilege, and also I have to say, um, joy to be able to moderate um, this panel. I've just had the privilege of getting to know three amazing people over lunch, and I'm really delighted to be able to help um, them share their stories with you here today. Um, so as introduced, thank you. I'm Alison Birch from J.P. Morgan, and um, I would like to briefly introduce our three panelists, but then um, after I've um, um, briefly introduce them. I'd like to give them a chance to introduce themselves to you a little more fully. So, um, we are, uh, we're very privileged to have Ms. Yuko Kawai, who is the principal examiner in the financial system and bank examination department of the Bank of Japan. We have Anna Wogowski, who's the Vice President of International Business Development for Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company. And uh, she's joining us here from, from the States. <laughs> and then we have Ms. Ri Matsukawa, who is a member of the House of Counselors representing the Liberal Democratic Party. <clears throat> So I'd like to start, um, uh, just to go, um, just make sure we go in order. I'd like to start um, uh, with you, Yuko. Yes. If you could, um, if you could introduce yourself, um, and I'd like to hear from you, um, your, just what <coughs> motivated you to be here today to talk on the topic of women in the demand world, and maybe um, talk a little bit about um, your career path that brought okay. you here. Sure. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm, I'm greatly honored to be here. Um, my name is Yuko Kawai. I'm currently working at Bank of Japan. <clears throat> my professional ca career, approximately 30 years, um, is divided into two. Like first half of my career, I was working for, uh, well, I started my career at Chemical Bank, um, which that tells my age, actually. Um, <laughs> Chemical Bank, which no longer exists. Uh, it now is a part of JP Morgan Chase and um, <clears throat> in Tokyo branch. The reason why I started my career there, I actually at that time I couldn't speak a word of English, actually. So my boss who had, who had hired me, if he saw me today, um, he would be very surprised. <laughs> the reason why I joined the Chemical Bank, despite of my linguistic inability, um, was the exact reason why, why I am here today, um, that I really wanted to pursue my professional career and at that time, 30 years ago, 
there were not many job opportunities for the professional, uh, the, the to be professional women um, as university graduates. <clears throat> so I chose to uh, join the bank and uh, I was really happy <clears throat> in pursuing my career on the for like almost 15 years and then I decided to change my path after accumulate uh, after having accumulated enough self confidence I would say <clears throat> then I moved over to <clears throat> moved over the wall over to the public sector the bank of japan <clears throat> now I'm here so um, I think uh, during our discussion, uh, we can touch upon how I changed my job and uh, what, <clears throat> what this move, uh, move brought me and what, how it enhanced my views around mm -hmm. profession and also the how I live mm. and things. I'm really looking forward to discussion. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. <coughs> Anna? Uh, so uh, about 35 years ago, I uh, joined a company named Lockheed Martin. And, um, it, it'll be February when I uh, will celebrate my 35 years of service there. Um, if, if you had told me that I would become a vice president in the aerospace uh, and in defense industry, I would have said you were crazy, right? <laughs> Here, I, I joined the company as an engineering intern, um, and uh, I, I didn't expect to become a vice president. What I expected was an opportunity to, thank you, to engage. Um, contribute and be provided challenging work. Um, I was very fortunate. I had a number of mentors and I had a company with an infrastructure that really uh, supported me and provided those opportunities. Oh. <laughs> Maybe you can hold. <laughs> So I really dedicated the first part of my career to, to becoming competent at, at something and, and gaining experience. Um, as an engineer, that's what we value and, and, and that's you know, what attracts us is problem solving. So it was challenges that drove me, but those same challenges just kept offering more and more opportunities. Um, and so um, with, with that infrastructure and that support system that I had, I changed career career paths many times, even though I never changed companies, it was almost like going to a different company every time I took on a different role. My biggest challenge was probably the business side, which um, I know my colleagues here that I met today are just amazing at. Um, so I, I don't think I ever expected anything. I worked hard. I, I just um, tried to make my way, and I think I gained the respect of my colleagues in that. Um, but what I will say is that 35 years later, I think it is amazing because today, young women do expect to become mm -hmm. vice presidents and presidents and CEOs. Um, we have a CEO as, as our, um, a lady, I'm sorry, as our CEO. Um, so, so there you are. I think that's amazing. And I think it's forums like this that allow those women to have those visions. So uh, thank you for having me and thank you for everything that, that you do um, in that advancement of women in the workplace. Thank you, Anna. Really? Thank you, I'm, Rui, I'm Rui Matsukawa. I'm very, very happy to come back here. I mean, last year, actually this is the third time I joined ACCJ, this Women in Business event. Last year, I came here accompanying Prime Minister Abe and then I was a director for gender mainstreaming division at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, I, saw, uh, I came to actually join the ACCJ to sell what I did, uh, World <laughs> Assembly for Women. Wow. Uh, and um, this year I joined as a politician, a parliamentarian, and um, it's really exciting to see the change. I mean, I never imagined in my life to become a politician, never. Never wanted, never interested, never you know, dreamed of. <laughs> but, and then I, I, I was really loved my previous job as a um, diplomat at the foreign ministry. I love diplomacy, I love my job. And I have two daughters, still young, eight and three. But I, I now realize that changes sometimes come to your life whether you take it or not, it's your decision. But sometimes, I think women can be very bold and take risk or take challenge. And uh, that's what I tried. And still, I'm being a politician three months. 
So I'm not, uh, you know, not necessarily eligible to talk a whole about the politics or women in politics yet. But I see the world in Kasumiya Seki and Nagatacho, which is uh, actually the next, uh, you know, <laughs> it's a vicinity, but um, it's a totally different world. And um, I'm very much uh, uh, seeing this change in Japan that um, this ACCJ Women in Business event, I don't know how many times you did, but you haven't seen this kind of women's conference in Japan three years ago. This change, we really see the tide of the women's you know, promotion, women's you know, encouraging women's you know, issues as a top priority as a com country. And I, 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 think, I really hope that uh, this ACCJ Women in Business Summit will bring another first, you know, another push over to the already starting to changing society to another push. And I thank you very much. Goodness, that's a lot of pressure for uh, all of you here in the room. I know, um, I know we have many, many very senior executives here. Um, so you, you heard the challenge from, um, <laughs> from, uh, from the uh, panelists there. The, um, so looking a little bit to the, the title and the theme of this panel, um, um, you know, being the, you know, a woman in a man's world or being, um, 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 you know, the only person in the room, or being a minority, or in some cases being a double minority. Um, I'd like to um, I'd like to hear a little bit about you know just just what what was it like to be um, maybe starting at the beginning of your career? What was it like to be the only woman in a wor in a man's world? Have you seen it change? Have you seen it change for um, for for yourself or? Um, for where you work, and maybe I'll start with you, really, um, since you, you know, I know you've, you're um, newly elected for um, 13 months, so I guess it, it's your, you know, for your whole career, mm -hmm. how you've looked at that. Sure. Uh, actually, I worked for the foreign ministry for 23 years, so which is not 35 years, but pretty long. <laughs> and uh, when I entered the foreign ministries, I was a clear minority. Mm -hmm. It's only four out of 30, and uh, there, even though you take the your senpai. You know, just one out of 30, that was the, the ratio of female in pipeline for the career, you know, to the, the director or the above level. And then, so I was, I felt I really a minority, but um, the thing is, over these 20 years, the culture has changed a lot. Now that um, when I enter the ministry, mm -hmm. I have to worry about whether I can get married or I can have children continue to be in the ministry. But everybody now takes parental leave, get married. If she doesn't marry, it's her decision, not because she's working for the foreign ministry. It's totally changed. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, what's brought the change? I, I think it's the uh, one partly because of the top leader's decision. I still remember um, Mr. Hayashi, who was uh, then deputy minister, the top of the, the bureaucrats, decided, order the each uh, director of of the each division to your divi you as a director, you have to allow your staff to take two weeks summer vacation. Well, one week, one week is okay, but two weeks in total. Otherwise, you will be discredited. Mm -hmm. And then before that, people are proud of working till 3, p 3 a.m. in the midnight because that proves you are in a di you know important division. But after that, people started, the culture has changed, shifted to that, um, well, if you work too long, which means you're inefficient, <laughs> and if your director makes everybody work till you come, you know, till you leave, it means you are not very eligible for the directorship. So I, I think the, the culture changed. Now that one third of the foreign ministry, uh, you know, the career pipeline official is women. Mm -hmm. So it's really changing. And then as for the politics, mm -hmm. Um, now, maybe Mr. Kato, uh, uh, the Minister Kato already talked, but 20% of the House of Councillors, which I belong to, is now that 20% of women. Before it was 12%. Mm -hmm. And for the lower house, it's still really low, but I think it's changing mm -hmm. now. And uh, that change, how it's brought, it's, I think, really, the, in my case, in the, the politics or the, the ministry, the change was brought up by the top leaders. Mm -hmm. I think so, Prime Minister Abe, or the Gabe government, or the, the top leaders. I think that's really important. CEO has to change. They are men, but they have to change. 
That's interesting. So you don't think, um, so you think it was um, leader-led, not, not women-led in, in your... No, I, I think because 20 years ago, or maybe 30 years ago, men are the one in the decision making. Uh -huh. They have to change, to, yeah. to make a change. Yeah, so okay. my case, I, I do think men has to change. Right. Okay, okay, great. Another call to action to uh, some <laughs> of the audience there. So, so you, yes, Anna. So, yeah. so I've definitely the defense industry and the engineering industry are both, when I started, were both very mm -hmm. male oriented. And so I was the, the only woman in the room quite a few times. And a lot of times you can see that as a disadvantage, as that you know your voice may not be heard. But there were a lot of advantages that came with being a woman in, in that room. Mm -hmm. um, just they, they did tend to listen when you brought a different uh, perspective forward. And they also tended to remember your name. Yeah. <laughs> and if you made a contribution, they did tend to remember she made a contribution. So, so I think that was a very positive aspect. Mm -hmm. And I, the other thing we talked about a little bit when, when we met at lunch is that um, in some ways, uh, I worked, my husband worked as well. Um, and that provided me a freedom that I think some of my colleagues didn't have. So if you imagine the burden that my male colleagues felt as being the only breadwinner in the house, uh, I didn't have that burden. And so I felt that allowed me to take some risks that maybe they weren't as comfortable taking. To a certain degree, I think my husband was able to take some risks as well. Mm -hmm. so, so I think I, I have mm -hmm. seen it change, by the way, during my career. Definitely seen it change. We're not there yet. We've mm -hmm. got a lot of work to do still, uh, but, but we've definitely got the women in the pipeline and are close to creating that 30% tipping point that everybody talks about. So. That's fantastic to hear that you're so close to the tipping point. Yuko, I'm not sure that you would um, say that where you work now is close to that 30% tipping point, but, but maybe you can also talk about you know, your experiences being a woman in a variety of different men's world, right. you know, investment banking <clears throat> as well as your Good current. part is, as Anna said, that I'm remembered. Mm -hmm. I'm the first one to be remembered, that, that's true. But on the other hand, the flip side of that is I'm watched all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm monitored all the time. And um, the, I was like, as, as Roy was also the case, I'm sure, but I was the first female something for several mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And of course, as the first female something, I'm being watched and also like being closely monitored. And if the, I make mistakes, and that would be, that would be promoted mm -hmm. because I'm the female who made mistake. So mm -hmm. that's one thing. And also the other thing was that I'm given, I'm like uh, <coughs> stereotyped into some image that female are supposed to behave that, like this. Like say, female, the female worker, female professional should be able to give some other ideas than men. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not that creative. So like <laughs> that stereotype image so, sometimes Make it work work me better, but to sometimes work work me worse. Like, mm -hmm. Actually, so it's like the one good thing and the other bad things, like mm -hmm. the flip side of both. I think. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, thank you um, um, for that. The um, one thing that struck me in your self um, introductions were was the theme around mobility. You know, um, none of you are doing today the exact same thing that you started out doing. How did you, how did you, well, what, what impact do you think mobility had to get you where you are now? And how did you navigate that? And, um, um, and any thoughts you'd like to sh um, share on the impact of that? And maybe we'll, we'll stick with you, you. Sure. Okay, as I said, the, my career, career has been, uh, is divided into two. First half, the, I wouldn't say only thing, but the, the one major thing I was interested in was money and money making. That's the, that's the reason why I worked for the, I worked on the trading floor at the American bank. And the other thing was excitement. Um, I was seeking for that excitement all the time. Therefore, I thought that the financial market gives me that. Mm -hmm. Then like at <clears throat> some, some point of my career, as I approached to the management level, I wasn't really at, at the management level already, but I, as I approached the management level, I saw that the, the other side of the business, I think, that the managing the institution is not an easy job. It's, it's, it's not always a clean job, I would say. 
So that uh, <clears throat> I saw the other side of the job, therefore I, saw, I started to think about, well, I really want to be helpful, I really want to do something, I really want to service the public interest. So that's the, that's the reason why I switched my job completely over to the other side, which is to, onto the public sector the, at the Bank of Japan. So, um, and also the mobility Diana just, just explained um, gave me the push, I think. By changing the job, by changing the job, I really didn't to need to hesitate mm. because my husband has a profession, so I'll be supported. So mm -hmm. I, that's that's what I did. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The, uh, maybe jumping to you, Dewey, Would you like to talk a little bit about your? Yeah. Um, really, you know, you know, I was nodding. You know, why Yuko is talking about <laughs> it. I think for my case, I chose my job out of curiosity. I mean, mm. and excitement. I chose my job to become diplomat 23 years ago because at that time the Berlin Wall collapsed and then I, I was uh, the first year college student and I'm really excited. I mean, wow, you know, the Soviet Union, I thought it's like, uh, you know, the empire of the evil, <laughs> but, but uh, one day it's changed. <laughs> and so the international relations, international politics, so intense, so exciting, so I decided to become diplomats. And then the reason, and then being diplomats, I really lo loved it. But um, when the chance came to, although it's risky, to be, become a, uh, in a, a member of the politics, being a politician, I was really, um, you know, really take uh, you know many thoughts because the first thought was I have two daughters, and uh, you know it seems like a very hard job, very difficult for mm -hmm. women to follow. You know, like, uh, I, I don't know how many people know the, the life of the politicians. Typical politician's life is like going back to his or her constituency Friday afternoon, coming back to um, Tokyo uh, Monday night, I mean, evening. So it's like if you have two, you know, kids, still young, and how can you handle? That was my question before even think about becoming a politician. And I don't have any politicians' family, so I don't know the, the exact details about the politics. But anyway, and then the reason why I chose to be, well, I, first I try out the election is, well, there are many reasons I thought politics is important for the diplomacy, or the, I think I should prove myself to be an ordinary woman, ordinary woman who, has, who cares for he, her, her family, husband and the children, and do politics because I know much better for the most ordinary women. So, and then the, the voice should be reflected to politics. So I have many reasons and I, I think I should find certain way, certain way that ordinary women can consider, okay, well, I can be there in the politics, congressman, because she, she's doing that, handling the family and then also the work. But all these you know, reasons, but I think even under that, I, I think I, I, for my case, it's, Curiosity. I, mm. I'm really curious that I want to see the other part of this country, and um, I know government's part. I've been Kasumiaseki for 20 years. I really want to see the other part of the, this country. So that was uh, my real motivation. And in the end, you have your life only one time. And I do think Japanese women are very, uh, how do you say that, um, benefited in terms of the, the, there are many choices, as you know, she said. You don't have to really worry about, uh, you know, losing your job and then make your family, you know, get being a beggar. I mean, uh, my case at least, I know my husband continued to work, so my daughter, even though young, and even though I lose the election and become penniless, still <laughs> my daughters are okay, right? And, and I think that's the case for the many Japanese women here in this room too. I I, I do think girls and women should take risks. We are benefited. We should mm -hmm. take this advantage. Thank you. Thank you. And so the, I do want to say yeah. one thing. Yes. The only thing, I have not changed companies. I've changed jobs many times. Yeah. But talking with these two ladies today has given me hope that I am going to find a career <laughs> after this one. <laughs> and I'm going to push myself to see what life is after Lockheed Martin someday. Fantastic. <laughs> The, um, but as you say, you haven't changed companies, but you have significantly changed what you've done in, um, you know, um, what you've done for Lockheed Martin. You've changed um, um, roles, you've changed, I think you've even changed, you know, work styles. Um, 
um, over the years. What um, you know? What would you like to say uh, to this audience about about how you've because you 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 have not been in your your exact division for everything. So what, how would you like to talk about that? So, so for me, it, it's really, I th and I think there's a common theme on this stage, mm -hmm. it's about the challenge. I think um, you called it curiosity, mm -hmm. but it is about the challenge. Once I got comfortable in a job, I started looking, mm -hmm. uh, what's next? And what is the challenge that I want to go do? So typically, the way I would do it is I go volunteer, because now I had more time. I'm comfortable in my job. I can do it without working you know, 50 or 60 hours a week. I can do it at 40, so I can volunteer for other things. And um, sure enough, I'd get a new assignment <laughs> out of that somehow. And then I would be in over my head all over again. I would kick myself <laughs> and say, what were you thinking? Why are you doing this? You were starting to have a life. And I, I can't help myself. And I think you'll see a common theme here. Uh, and so I think that's what motivated me and it's just, you learn so much by doing that. <clears throat> you just, and, and taking on a, a whole do, new different dimension mm -hmm. um, to the job. Yeah. So I encourage, I encourage that highly, but I will also say in the early career, I would, I would really encourage you to be good at something because that's gonna be the foundation that you're gonna have throughout the career. It's what you fall back on when you get really uncomfortable. You say, well, I know at least I can do this. I may not ever be able to do the new thing successfully, but, but I know I can do whatever that is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, um, that's very interesting to have that. Um, it's probably very confidence building to start from a position of great competence um, and confidence. And I think one of the things that um, I heard um, um, earlier is that when you kind of, I guess, look back on your career in the rearview mirror, you discovered that nothing was in vain. Mm -hmm. That that, um, um, and I think really I heard from you that you know there's there's been times when you've been uncomfortable with making a change, um, and um, um, but I think actually you were the one who made the comment that that looking back nothing was yeah. in vain. I wonder if you'd like to expand upon that. Yeah, I, I mean, be, um, well, looking back, uh, nothing was in vain. I mean, sometimes you've been, I was posted to a, you know, a division, which I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And then, well, anyway, you just work hard. And then this experience actually helps me. Well, the experience I had at the foreign ministry certainly helps me to search in a new field in politics. And, and I think it's not the same, you know, what, even though, I think Anna's case is the same. I mean, the, even though you start with engineer, and then the totally different, it's, it's at a glance, it may be very different type of the job, but actually it helps. My, actually I'm a, a Harukisto, I don't know whether you know it, but uh, I'm, a, uh, you know, I'm a Harukisto, and uh, he wrote a very nice book about the shokugyo toshite no shosetsuka, a novelist, mm -hmm. as a, a job. And then he, that's the, the word I really felt, oh yeah, he's right. Mm -hmm. He said nothing is in vain. He was a bartender uh -huh. before, be, you know, and then when he started to write about the novel, mm -hmm. and he said that his experience in watching over the people at the bar, as a, you know, the running the bar, helps him to write about the novel. And mm -hmm. you don't know, my, my, my really real sense is, you may think, oh, this is useless, or this is not what I want to do, but, if you do it, it will link in your life in 20 years, 10 years. I think that's what I, mm -hmm. I, I really felt mm -hmm. and in my life too. Great, okay. I, I hated the raising kids, you know, after six months, I hate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I love my kids, of course, but after you seeing the baby every day, 24 hours, you fed up it. But uh, this experience now really helps me mm -hmm. to talk to many people in the politics because I see more variety of people than before. I mean, foreign ministry is such a small world. You, you see many people with similar, similar career, similar backgrounds. Mm -hmm. You see many different people. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it really helps. Mm -hmm. What I thought not necessarily I wanted to do is really helping mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. Right, great, thank you. <laughs> so I'd like to switch um, um, a, a little bit um, and, um, and talk about, because in a man's world, it can be hard to find a mentor. It can be hard to find a role model that resonates uh, with you. 
And um, uh, so, Yuko, I'd like to start with you. I mean, did you find it, um, did you find um, it hard to find a mentor? Did you, did, uh, did a mentor, a role model, or anyone have an right. impact okay. on your career? <clears throat> Um, I haven't, well, I don't know. The, as I said, at the first, first, half, in the first half of my career, I was working for an American company, so it was easier, relatively easier for me to find a female mentor uh, to me. But I couldn't find a um, good mentor for double minority, mm -hmm. which is Asian female. Um, at that time, Asian was much more minority than uh, today, uh, the, what you see today. So Asian minority, um, I didn't find a good mentor, but still, um, the I could find like a bits of men bits of mentor mentor everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I really sought for the uh, sought for the advice. Now, like at Japanese company, at relatively senior level, uh, the I have young female mm -hmm. the workers who are asking for my advices, and I really wanted to want to help them. But um, the my time is limited, so and um, I'm kind of a scarce resource as a female female senior executive. So I wonder whether the company can help me um, in sharing my time officially so, um, the, by creating some type of mentorship mentorship program, so that it's not only me but also the other male mm -hmm. the the managers who can if we can support the female the youngsters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Thank you, Anna. So um, I actually shared a story that uh, one of the things that the company did for me early in my career, I would say, this was back in 1990s, so about 10 years into my career, uh, was an executive development program where they, um, they did an assessment of what my strengths were, but more important, what were my weaknesses. Uh, helped me develop a plan to go address those weaknesses um, but probably the most important part is that they assigned an executive mentor to work with me to help me develop those weak areas. Um, in my case, business acumen is where I thought I was weak and, and the gentleman who was my role model for the most knowledgeable business man in, in our company did not volunteer to be a mentor. <laughs> And so I walked into his office and I said, hey, uh, I need a mentor and you're not on the list, but I want you. And, uh, and sure enough, he did it. And I'll tell you, I wouldn't be in this job if I had not walked into that office. And so I, I do think that having a mentor is very important. But as women in an industry where it's dominated by men, it may be intimidating to um, approach a man about a mentorship because you know, there's always the connotation. A mentor relationship is a very intimate relationship. And so being a woman, there's always the stigma that goes with that, oh, why is she spending so much time with him, right? Um, and, and I would tell you, this made it a very safe environment. This was a program by the company. In fact, most of the people, if you're in a man's world, that are gonna be the ones you wanna be mentored by in certain things are gonna be men. Mm -hmm. And so there has to be a safe environment for that. So I, th I think it's very important mm -hmm. that, you know, as, as that goes forward, that you have that ability. Great, thank you. It can be yeah. men or women, right? right. Fantastic, thank you. Louis? Really? Yeah, I mean, I think men has mentors. Even though you don't name it, you have your senpai and you, you are mm -hmm. surrounded by male and you go for the drinking and then you have someone to ask for this and that, you know, in a natural way. I, I think for women, it's, it's really important to have a mentor. Uh, if, especially when you're surrounded by men. But um, for my case, personally, I didn't have mentor, but I, there is a you know, female senpai, female senior, that uh, even though I don't to talk to her daily basis, so, but uh, still her existence really encourages me. Like she is the director for the security policy post, and uh, which, I, which, er, which area I really love to. But, uh, so, I mean, I, I think it's really important for anybody, especially for, for girls, women, to have someone that you can hope for. You know, you can look at the person. If she's a mentor, she or he is a mentor, that's best. But even not the case, I think it's good to have someone that you can relate in your mind and then, well, I can maybe, you know, follow her path or like I can, you know, she can be example and then I, 
if she can do that, maybe I can do that. I mean, this kind of person really encourages you. And not necessarily it has to be she, it can be he. But I think it's really good to have someone like that. And if possible, like with this great program, if the company can arrange that, that's of course the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you um, for sharing that. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, um, you know, that we, you know, we've heard about informal mentors or role models and also institutional ones. It sounds like they both have their place. Mm -hmm. um, but what, you know, I, I think, um, but Yuko, what you've raised here, which is interesting to me, is the um, probably there aren't yet that many senior women in any, maybe maybe in a man's industry, but maybe in all industries, and how do you apportion that scarce resource mm -hmm. to, to people? And I think that's definitely something that, um, that we can all think about in terms of having official mentorships mm -hmm. that, that help make it more fairly allocated. So that's really interesting. So I'm wondering if, um, you know, if, if you've seen changes in your industry over, you know, over the length of your career. You know, um, we've heard a couple of times here, you know, the only woman in the room or, you know, the only double minority in the room. Um, perhaps everything is, um, perhaps everything is now, is now good and sunny and rosy. Um, and maybe, um, you know, maybe there's changes that have been in the industry. Maybe you can, if you're not there yet, you can see it. I wonder if there's best practices other than um, mentoring that, that you'd like to share. Maybe, Anna, we can start with you on that. Sure. Um, I, look, first of all, I really, I, when I say that I've been very fortunate for the, with the company that I've worked for, I, I mean it 100%. Um, this has been a journey. You know, I talked about the 1990s and the, the, the program, the development program that they set up for women. Um, I think my, my CEO would be one that would tell you in 2000, in early 2000, um, there were a few women and they started getting together and talking about challenges. They did this at lunch and that group has grown. So 2001 to today from three women to 300 women mm -hmm. that now get together and there's a network established to share those best practices. Um, there's been an initiative on, on our part within the company and it's not just about women because um, it, it's really about that workforce of the future. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about diversity and we, we alluded to double minorities I think we're, we're both double minorities. I am actually uh, Hispanic, so I, I was born in Cuba. And what, what we're finding in Texas, where, where I am and where um, aeronautics is headquartered, is that in the future, 50% of our workforce will be Hispanic. Mm -hmm. We need scientists, engineers, and they are not going for that um, competency. And so we really need to figure out ways to encourage them. Uh, but we also need to figure out ways, I'm sorry, to accept them into um, the infrastructure because what we need is for every employee that's working with us to be contributing 100%. We can't be, you know, their voice is silenced. And especially in the field that I am, which when you think about international business development, it is all about diversity and it is all about thinking differently to solve people's, um, in, in our case, uh, pressing uh, national security needs. And, and so it really is about diversity and that's been the focus for us. Um, it started with women because that was, that was such a gap, but it's really moved into the underrepresented workforce. And so that group of women's initiatives that turned into 300, we're seeing those prop up for Hispanics, for Asian Americans, for African Americans. And they're creating these resource groups to help each other, but they can't do it alone. It, the one initiative that I would say, it, and it isn't talked about that much, that I thought was very eye-opening was, uh, in, we call it uh, white males as diversity partners. Um, and it really is about the fact that we need that white male population to be allies mm -hmm. with the rest of the workforce. Last year, one third of our new hires were from underrepresented um, 
what do you call it, populations, right? Mm -hmm. And so, so it's important because these are the people that are going to be feeding your retirement accounts, right? <laughs> so, so it's something yeah. that we need to pay attention to. Yeah, and we heard about that this morning um, the, um, um, uh, from, um, from Mr. Kato, who talked about how Japan needs more participation in the workforce from women and, and, um, uh, and, and, and people to, to continue working beyond traditional retirement age, so I think that's true. The, um, um, so um, maybe I'll throw it over to you, Yuko. Um, you, you know, I think you were talking earlier that, uh, talking about best practices that you see in, um, in your um, area of employment. You were talking about young people coming and seeking out. Maybe there's more you'd like to share about best practices you see in, you know, at the Bank of Japan. I'm not sure that I, I would call it best practice mm -hmm. um, in Bank of Japan but, or not, but in the management also that my peers are trying to promote women visibly mm. at the senior mm -hmm. level and uh, we are setting uh, the number, uh, the, 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 well, the, we, are, we are aiming at the number, uh, mm -hmm. the certain number, the percentage of the professional women, the women at the senior level by 2020 kind of thing. And um, the reason why I said that this is, I, the, the reason why I hesitate to call this as a best practice is this, um, the, it's very good to have a number and it's, it's, it's very good to have visibility so that we all are, we all know that we are aiming at mm -hmm. that and we are all working for that. On the other hand, uh, that gives us the pressure. Mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm from, I, I maybe I may have been promoted because the only reason why I'm promoted was because I'm women. Right. Which is not very good, mm -hmm. actually. I really wanted to be promoted because, I, what I, because of what mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's really a balance that the, to put the practice, um, the, to, 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 to lay out the practice um, as um, official, the, say, the, uh, and the practice is, is not, it's not, it's, it's not a bad thing, but if it's run badly, I think it's, it, it could damage us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Really? Um, I already practices? talk about the leadership, mm -hmm. but I, I, I mean, I do think the, um, the, whether you call it best practice or not, leadership needs to change their, allow mm -hmm. employees to um, have their much various type of their, the more flexible work working style. Mm -hmm. In the end, I think what hinders Japanese women to be active or promoted or in a decision-making um, level is, I think because women has double work and then because their work is evaluated by hourly basis so far. And, and, and I, I think, uh, and also the monolistic, you know, monolistic long hour work from nine to what. I think that hinders all the women in the first place and then maybe the man has a, who has a, some uh, you know, additional work to do or other. I think now that um, uh, the older leaders, in, and then Prime Minister is doing that, by, by the way, uh, has to, we have to have the more flexible, various kind of, you know, working style. That is definitely the key. And uh, if, I was always wondering, my counterpart in Denmark, she comes home every day, 4.30, and then eat dinner together with her husband and her daughters, I mean children, easy. And uh, her husband pick up the kids at the child care center and then she goes to supermarket and then prepare for the dinner, easy. And, and I, I think, well, the working style of Japan has to be changed in a way to allow people to enjoy the private life. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, women, enough ambitious, cannot they say yes to the post she offered because she knows, you know, you know, I'm really, really frustrated when men says, some Japanese men especially, says, oh, women are not ambitious enough. No, I'm sorry, not the case. I mean, because in Japan, being, you know, promoted sometimes often means like she has to take the double or triple work, mm -hmm. you know, housekeeping and raising kids and doing the, the, you know, important post and the work late. I'm sorry, that's the case. Not because we are not <laughs> ambitious. We are ambitious, but we are not on the level playing field. So uh, I do think this working, working, you know, revolution, working style revolution that uh, we are trying to, to, to promote 
is the key. I, I don't know, it's, it's not the best practice, I'm sorry, but I think the CEOs here in this room, especially male, mm -hmm. <laughs> can take the, you know, allow your employees to have more flexibility in the working style. Well, I and would, that helps. Yeah, thank you. And I would argue that that is best practices, that um, not just for women working in a man's world, but for all of us. So thank you for that. So I'd like to, um, uh, we got a question from the audience um, that I'd like to turn to. So the Abe administration has established a target for Japanese companies to have at least 30% of managers be women by the year 2020. So I'm wondering um, from the panelists, are there any, um, you know, what's the role of leadership in making this, um, this target achievable? Are there any obstacles? Are there any, um, you know, any observations that you'd have? And you, uh, I'd like to start, um, um, uh, Yuka, with you, because you did mention something that I personally always worry about when there's a quota, which is if you get to a certain level, will someone say, oh, that you're, you're one of those 30% uh, quota people? But um, I wonder if you have any comments on, um, on, on this target. As I said, um, it's, it's, it's good to have a number target. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes it is bad. I mean, if it's it's run badly yeah. and they could damage the individuals. Um, so make sure that you wouldn't do that in practice. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And like the, the by putting the number laying out the number is good, but just 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 make sure that it is run properly. I think that's that's what I want to I want to say one thing. And the other thing is that of course we really need all the supports and understandings, and we I'm already sick and tired of asking for the supports and the support the supports and understandings but we really need to have that because as Anna said that having diversity is very good mm -hmm. and we we all we all need to appreciate that having diversity costs us I told my colleagues at Bank of Japan when I joined the Bank of Japan um, because Bank of Japan I'm uh, again double minority here mm -hmm. because I'm mid career at Bank of Japan which is very rare and given that, the Bank of Japan has this culture of not explaining the things verbally to, to the others because they share the common understanding mm -hmm. already by heart because they are, they are, they've been grown up uh, together in, in the company. So I'm telling them that having diversity like me in the institution gives you the chance of explaining the things to the others in your words. And when you explain something, you know you haven't understood it 100%. So by explaining to me, the foreigner or the alien to the, to, to the institution, you now understand what was wrong with your, mm -hmm. with your work, with your setup. Um, so I mean, having diver the, the appreciation for having diversity, mm -hmm. if that comes natural to the institution, I think um, the, that institution will um, naturally support the 30% target. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that really needs to come. Yeah. And Rui, this is, I guess, your, uh, your boss's initiative, so maybe you can... Uh, uh, yeah, I already touched on upon to yep. some extent, yeah. and I, I think the KPI for the 30% is really important. And now that we don't say mm -hmm. too much, so I'm sorry, but uh, it doesn't mean that we throw it away. I, I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think, because I already talk about this, you know, the working life evolution is very mm -hmm. important, yep. but additional, I think, thoughts is to... Um, I think men, women both, sh especially the Japanese, should have the idea that um, your life, your life stage, you have to free yourself. Um, life, you know, uh, vertically and also the, you know, the, the how this horizontally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Meaning, because for example, especially for women, we, we have babies, mm -hmm. you know? Like, so you, your life, you have, women has life stage. So sometimes you want to, I, I think it's a good thing to work crazily till midnight or you know, two days in a row to think about your work if you like and if you're enthusiastic, that's fine, especially when you're young. But you know, when it comes to uh, you have a baby, you want to slow down your career, or you want to slow down the work, that should be allowed. Mm -hmm. And it just also should be allowed to come back. Otherwise, you're losing the, all this potential. So I, I think if the, every individual, man or women, has this idea about, well, you have life stages. Sometimes you are crazy, but sometimes you need to slow down. Sometimes you take you know, some thought and then maybe leave the, and the horizontal comes here. I think we 
all the companies, not all, but if possible, I think each person, if allowed to have another job, well, I'm a politician now. I really hope to be, uh, have a, being a researcher's job in addition if I have time. But um, recently in Japanese companies like Roto uh, Pharmaceutical allowed employees to have additional, I mean, another, how do you say, sec second job? How do mm -hmm. you say that? Is mm -hmm. this correct word? Yes, sir. Parallel work, mm -hmm. we call it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if that's, you know, I think this kind of flexibility in terms of your life management, you know, uh, the vertically and also the horizontally, mm -hmm. you, you allow to have another job in addition. These kind of, and also the working style too, I mean, flexibility will benefit Japanese society very much to the, the point, real mature society where people can enjoy and then fully express his or her potential. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really necessary. Okay. That's what we should do. That's great. And Anna, I guess I can't ask you about a Japanese quota, but I wonder if you have an observation about any obstacles that Japan might face um, meeting this 30% quota. So I, I think it's been discussed that, you know, the, if, if you're going to set an, and we talked about ambition, Mm -hmm. That's an ambitious goal. <laughs> yes. And so if you are going to set an ambitious goal like that, you need to develop the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's really what's been set up here is that you also need to make sure, I, th I think there's always a reason to set a very high bar mm -hmm. um, as a goal. Mm -hmm. And I had a boss that used to do that. But he also told me every time he did that, he would say, let me know if, if that goal that I know you probably can't achieve that I'm setting is uh, starting to, to frustrate you to the level of holding you back. Right. And so I think that's where, you know, it is an ambitious goal. Right. And I wouldn't concentrate so much on that is the number and it's in 2020 as much as that is the goal that's the process, um, and yeah. keep shooting for that goal. Yeah, but, but the infrastructure needs to be there right. and the mm. support needs to yeah, be there to you. do it. Okay, so, um, um, so last question, lightning round. I would like to ask each of the panelists, um, knowing what you know now in your career, what is, um, what is one piece of advice that you would give your younger self? So Yuko, I'm gonna start with you. Um, study hard, harder, <laughs> smile, <laughs> and relax. Okay. I think that's really the word, the, the, the relax is really the advice mm -hmm, I want to give mm -hmm. myself. Great, thank you. Anna? I, I think uh, I would say um, trust yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody doesn't do things the same way. We talked about diversity, and people take different paths, careers take different paths. We talked about vertical. Some, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's a jungle gym, mm -hmm. right? And you have to jump around a bit. Um, but trust, trust your instincts, because you're the one that knows what's best for you. We talked a little bit before about the fact that I had flunked work-life balance, but it is a way to, to learn what you do want to do, right? And, um, and how you want to improve in that area. Um, so, so I would just say, trust yourself and don't take yourself too seriously. <laughs> Sometimes we just tend to take things too seriously. Mm -hmm. Enjoy yourself. Great, thank you. Ready? Thank you. I'm noting both, you know, Yuko mm -hmm. and Anna says, so really, I think confidence is really important. And then, well, my case also need to study harder. But <laughs> I, I do think, I mean, for, my, for me, I wanted to say my young self, if I can say it, make friends. Mm. I mean, I have, well, please don't worry, I have friends. <laughs> 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 but I, I do think the, uh, as your position comes higher and higher, you realize you cannot do things by yourself alone. Mm -hmm. And then you need to have the, uh, the friends, someone to, to do it together or like support you, and um, well, especially in the politics. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I think it's really uh, valuable um, talents or their, their expertise in terms, you know, I would call it expertise. If you have, you know how to make friends, especially women has a, I think national interesting to, to, to network each other, and that really helps me for the three years, especially as a director for gender mainstreaming division. And I realized, well, okay, I should, if I should have studied this networking or the making friends, you know, good friends, back in maybe 20 years ago, mm -hmm. wow, I can be anything. So I, I, I really want, uh, uh, this is, if I can go back 
I would definitely say to, to me in the past, okay, you should take more time to make friends and keep friends. That's um, all three very, very great tips. I think something we can all use today. So thank you very much for that. And, um, um, and uh, I think we would all, all of us like to join together in giving you a warm round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you.